Okay, Dad, today is Friday, August 2nd, and I had trouble sleeping last night, actually. I woke up at like 3.30, 4 in the morning, and just thinking like, my God, we might be headed for an all-out war. Um, oh. You know, we've been talking about this possibility for a while, and then it just started to get really real for me all of a sudden. Yeah. I was listening to Alexander Mercurius, and he was kind of explaining that he also thinks that this is really all hell can break out. And do you think that's that where we're headed the, right now? Well, Iran that, that has seems, right. That seems to be the consensus. Um, we're getting close. This is, you know, it's like I've said that Netanyahu has been has been trying to make this war happen for years, if actually decades. Um, he got awfully close, you know, a few months ago with his attack on the consular building, latest attempt, and I think we're probably even closer still. Something. The, the the Iranians have said they are going to retaliate. I mean, they, in fact, informed the Security Council that they were, that under international law, you know, they were going to retaliate as they have a right to do. Um, so there's no question that they will. It's just the only question is how big it is and will it be enough to set off a regional war. So we'll see. Well, it does. I, I feel like we're entering a new phase where it's not just a tit for tat type of retaliation, because what I have heard is that Iran is using the language that they're going to and uh, start a special military operation using the same terminology that Russia did when it started its uh, invasion into Ukraine. Um, and this this means that we are no longer just a one and done scenario, at least in my mind. If you're engaging in some type of special military operation, it means like, no, this is something we're building for the long haul, that this is no longer, we're at a new well, phase. Uh, the, the word special military operation, I think that actually the reason that Putin chose that was that he, he was trying to make it clear that this was not an invasion. His intent was to, to bring a, about a diplomatic solution. And he nearly pulled it off, right? Um, right, but so so it's same, a limited, same. right? It's a limited operation, but it is a military operation. I, I, so what I hear, when, you know, when they use that term, is that this is not a demonstration, which is what we did last time. A demonstration exactly. of what we're going to this time. We are going to do some damage to some of your military assets. I think that's what it means. Right. So I, I think that this isn't going to be like what we saw when Iran sent over hundreds of drones um, and terrified people in Israel and struck a few military targets, but didn't kill any civilians um, or, or anybody in that right, attack. Right, exactly. and right. And gave ample they, they, warning they, they, to they, the they, U.S. what they were going to do. Right, they gave ample... Right, it sounds like what we're happening here, I, do you think that there's going to be, there's a lot of backdoor communication currently right now with Iran and the United States to coordinate something similar like what we saw before, or if we're saying that no, this is a military operation, right? If it is we're a going military, to be secretive if, about how we're going yeah, to carry it right. out. If indeed it is a military operation, I don't, uh, you know, I don't think we're going to get the same kind of communication. You know, that was actually right. to notify the U.S. and through the U.S. Israel that this is not a military operation, right? We are not intending to cause serious damage to a military ba base or military facility or whatever. You know, th this is a demonstration. That's all it is. But if it is military operation, you don't um, telegraph what you're going to do ahead of time, right? It has to be a surprise. Right. So we're going to hit this base. Well, then, you know, you can concentrate your your air defense assets right there and prevent, you know, protect that particular target. So I think that we're not getting the same kind of communication this time. Right. There, there has to be a flurry of diplomatic uh, activity going on behind the scenes, right? I mean, there's so many people are getting in, are going to be involved in this when this when this gets escalates. I mean, we're talking about right. how will countries like Saudi Arabia or the UAE uh, Egypt, Jordan, you know, Lebanon, Syria, Turkey, all these countries in the region, Iraq, what, what, what's going to happen? What, what do you think? Will we see Jordanian airspace still being used to stop Iranian uh, missiles? What will we see happen in Iraq? I, I know you, you don't have a crystal ball, but <laughs> I don't know. What, 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 yeah. what, what do you ex what do you think is happening right now in, in, right. in these well, other anything, Middle Eastern countries? Yeah, I, I think that you know, that over time, as this horrible, you know, Gaza war progresses, the the hostility against Israel 
and the support for Hamas, especially following the assassination of their political leader, Hania, recently, that that support is only going to increase. That's, that hostility towards Israel is, has been continually increasing. So if anything, I, you know, I can't, I don't know if, if there's going to be a change in policy, but the pressures for a change in policy in support of Iran and its actions must only be increasing. And maybe we'll see some, you know, countries that maybe, for example, Jordan, I don't know, but Jordan maybe last time went along with the uh, U.S. air defense effort and it helped Israel uh, to help to protect their their bases. But this time they might not. They might not. And they might. Do you but, see but the any, pressure has got to be there. Do you see anything that could de-escalate this situation now or is have we gone over the precipice? Well, I don't know if we've gone, we're actually plunging into the abyss, but I don't think there's any question that Iran is going to retaliate. They've gone out and they said it, they've made it an official pronouncement, and now I don't think they can back away from that. It's just a question of how how big a strike this will be and what Israel's response will be. And then, you know, last time, okay, it began to escalate and then rapidly de-escalated. This time, we might not be so lucky. I just saw... Lindsey Graham was putting forward some legislation to say that if Iran or Hezbollah attack Israel, that the U.S. will attack Iran. I, I didn't read the full details. I just saw the headline right before. Um, I, I don't know how I don't know that process. But do you think that if this happens, what will the U.S. do? The, well, they've the, already made the it. U.S. is. Uh, yeah, they made it clear that they, they're they going to support me. Right. They, they, they're going to support Israel now to what right. extent. You know, well, clearly, like last time, I think they'll they'll obviously be involved in air defense. Actually, you know, again, most of the the missiles and drones that were shot down were shot down by U.S. and um, other Western aircraft, not actually by by Israel's land based air defense systems. And I think we probably will see the more of the same. But we don't know. You know, if if um, if Iran goes straight to hypersonic missiles. The U.S. might not even have time to respond. You know, they may not be able to get their aircraft up there to shoot them, and they and they and I don't think they would. Could be we able even to shoot, shoot a hypersonic anyway. missile? Right. No, probably right, not. Right. right. Um, so that would be a whole different kettle of fish. There, there does seem to be another option that I, I wonder if it's possible, and that's to sanction Israel, like. What, the West and the United States, they're so ready to sanction everybody on the planet. And, you know, right. you, you look at the United States wrong, they'll slap a sanction on you. Right. But why, why well, can't the yeah, world do that to, was, to Israel? Yeah. Let, let, let me just mention that recently the Washington Post came out with a, a uh, story about yeah the number of countries that are sanctioned by the U.S. around the world. Apparently a third of all countries in the world have been sanctioned by the U.S. Yeah. So anyway. Right. So. Yeah. So, like, look, the, the, if we want, if we don't want to start blowing up cities, you know, or across the Middle East, or want Iran to just, you know, level Tel Aviv, then couldn't a possibility be is like, okay, we cut off all oil. I mean, Israel relies heavily on all of these imports. It's a small country; right. it doesn't produce a lot of stuff itself. Um, so, if if we, well, it's, to, it's not it, like Russia, right? If you're you know, talking it's, about oil, then then you got to look at Turkey. And a lot of people are wondering why Turkey hasn't cut off the oil. Again, Erdogan's made a lot of noises. He even declared that he was going to stop trading with Israel, but nothing changed. It was just verbiage. It was just a lot of hot air. And he hasn't even said anything about the oil. I, I don't think that he's going to do it. There's a pipeline. That why, why not? Through. Yeah. Well, you know, obviously there's a, uh, a price to pay, an economic price to pay on the part of Turkey. Right. They get money um, from this. They, course, they get their but commission. Is it, is it enough to ju You know, yeah. he could prevent a war potentially, right? If he cuts he, that off. Yeah. I don't think that's the way that guy thinks. Yeah, he could do it. And he could also explain to his people, look, we're going to suffer because of this. We're going to be all, all going to be a little bit poorer. But I think he would be widely supported within Turkey if he did it. But he, mm -hmm. he isn't doing I mean, it. you can also it? sell that oil somewhere else on the market. Maybe you may not get as much money, but you know, well, oil is well, a pretty fungible go, good. Yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah, well, understand they, they, the pipeline, they, but surely yeah. they have other ways to move yeah, it around. True. I don't that's know. That's true. Well, you know, that's right. I'm, again, 
We saw what happened with Russia, all those pipelines, right? right? And then they, they, they just started diverted. shipping it all, the, selling it right. to China and India, you know? Right. And then from where it's transshipped to Europe, right? So do, do you think that's a possibility? Can, like, the world get oh. together? If it's basically only the United States that is saying that, okay, we got your back, Israel, and everybody else is realizing, wow, this is going to blow up and Israel is just dead set on starting this war. They're doing everything in their power to start this war. Right. It's clear. You know, it's like, obvious. Just it's think like about me. just... Right, exactly. Well, I mean, we, we pretty much, again, us, us little guys right here, you know, we could see what was going, coming. But something like with the, clearly Netanyahu is trying to start a war. It doesn't take a genius mm -hmm. to figure it out. It's, it's, you know, it's about as obvious a thing as can possibly be. Um, Right. Yeah, and I think most of the world right. understands that. I think, you know, even the U.S. government understands that, but they can't say it that way. They just, again, they're just, they're being just led along by the nose by Netanyahu. They, they, they do his bidding, even when they, even when they grumble in, inwardly, but they, they do his bidding. <laughs> it's, it's actually, it's, it's incredible the amount of strength that Iran has shown, despite everything. You know, yeah. and, and they're still they're viewed as the terrorists. You know, right, right, the, right. They, they Israel, Israel constant, can, yeah, do anything. Assassination. They've they've suffered many assassinations over the the, the course of the years. You know, at the hands mm -hmm. of Israel and ec severe economic sanctions that led to the deaths of many Iranians. Um, you know, a, a long war again that led to the death caused the death of 2 million Iranians, a war in which we supported the other side and when the other side used chemical weapons. Right. But anyway, that's, it's a right. long and sort I mean, of history. You know, they, they've suffered greatly and it's actually, it's shown remarkable restraint. Um, and you hear they're being pushed to the edge. You really got to feel for them. You say, well, yeah, I understand you don't want to have a war, but but this has to end at some point. Right. Maybe you do have to have a war as awful as it, it might be. As it, oh, right. I mean, I mean, apparently, apparently killing tens of thousands of women and children in Gaza wasn't enough to provoke people. So we're going to we bomb a, your embassy in, in Beirut, in Lebanon. They bomb the Iranian embassy. Then they, 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 ass well, they mean, assassinate. I, mean, I, I think you mean in Damascus, right? The, oh, is that in, in Syria? Yeah, the, 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 the Iranian Damascus, embassy attack? Back in April, right. Okay, my, my bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there, there's so many. It's, well, that just goes to show Israel's bombing so many countries and right, killing so many people it. in so many yeah, different no, places that I lose track. Yeah, leaders. I, I lose track. Yeah. It's like, right, right. Or just like them bombing that port in, in Yemen. I go, almost completely forgot about it. That that was only right. two weeks ago. You can't keep up with it. Yeah. It's just or this with constant antagonization. And then, right, the hospitals and schools and churches that are blown up and again and again and again it's like how what will it take you know for there to be a response and then there is a little response and then israel comes crying like oh my god we're under attack from these terrorists and uh -huh. then it's a very calculated calibrated response where hezbollah and iran never target civilians that's something i think people should be aware they right. call these people terrorists I, do, do you very, know how many rarely, civilians right. in israel have been killed from from Iranian or Israeli activity, or, or right. Iranian or Hezbollah, Lebanese for activity. Iranian, I think. Do you know probably, in the since it, October seventh? Okay, well, Iranian, I would say zero. I think for Hezbollah, zero, right? Uh, zero from right, Iran. Right, Hezbollah, a total of seven. And there's, you know, there's been a lot of. I think that's clearly unintentional. They've been striking military bases, but inevitably, yeah, the, the, there are civ civilian casualties in a war, even when you're targeting military assets, right? Um, now. Mm. Yeah, there's you know there's been this constant ex exchange of fire, and sometimes, you know, uh, Israel is saying we just can't put up with this anymore. Obviously, we got to invade, but it turns out that of uh, the the if you look at the number of strikes going from Lebanon into Israel and vice versa, it turns out that 83 percent come from Israel into Lebanon. So it's only 17 percent of the total, uh, you know, missile strikes and rocket strikes and you know, and and other um, kinds of uh, you know fire, only seventeen percent of that is right. actually from the Hezbollah side. Well, and Hezbollah, like you said, they they're they're very careful in their targets. They pick military targets. Right. Israel they, on the, is right. dumping white phosphorus on villages in South yeah. Lebanon. Yeah. You know they they, they have a, chemical warfare. That, just right. 
Well, in fact, I mean, just as we seeing, we see the extreme example in Gaza, but they've long had a history of targeting targeting civilian structures. You know, it's targeting civilians. Period. Um, that that's part of it. It's a military doctrine. I, I, right now, the, the name of it, the, it escapes me. But it's just a disproportionate Is attack. It on this. No, it's not gospel. No, it's a it's okay. an Arabic that, term. You know, right now that. It, it's, okay. But anyway, they. It's a matter of policy. Often, it's just like, okay, we'll just do a, okay, they're to let them know who's in charge. We're just gonna, you know, wipe out these villages, or maybe that'll that'll teach them again who's in charge. That'll teach them to um, to show restraint, not to fire any more rockets, because every time they fire a rocket, we'll take out a village. It's something actually like kind of similar to what the Nazis did in Greece. Any, you know, especially, well, yeah, if any Nazi. This soldier was killed as a matter of policy the nazis would grab 10 10 greeks and just shoot them there pull them out of a village and shoot them yeah the, the just i you know i i almost felt bad saying it last time but it's just the more i look at it it's just true like israel is an evil irredeemable state at this point i just don't see any way for that you can kind of paint it another way there's no way to say like oh there's you know, they have some reason, some rationality to it. There is nothing behind it right now. Is yeah. that, that fair to say? Do you, I think what is your opinion? I, mean, again, just, I would say it's a self-destructive path or down. It's irrational. You know, again, a, a, what, what they were doing before October 7th was cruel. You know, it was, you could even describe it as monstrous, but it was rational. It was careful, right? It was incremental. And they were winning. It was working. It was like the world had forgot about the Palestinian problem. And they were slowly chipping away at the West Bank, you know, seizing another couple of acres every month or uh, driving off, you know, more people from the land that they, they wanted. Um, and that could have gone on for a long, long time. And nobody would have said anything. Occasionally, there'll be the, the wringing of hands. But... But by and large, it was forgotten. It's, it was was not part of any, you know, of the. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't attracting anybody's attention. It wasn't part of the the you know the news stories that we see every night. Um, it was out of the news. It was out of people's consciousness, and they could have just continued that way. That would have been rational. It would have been very cruel, but it would it was rational what they were doing. Now, what they're doing now is not irrational. It's self-destructive. The world is turning against them. They're becoming an international pariah. It's really hard for them to turn around or, you know, make a U-turn at this point. To, they've gone so far down this road that it's really it looks like there's really no going back. Um, and we, we've talked about this early, like earlier, you take, commit half a genocide. That's at that point you stop what you're doing. It's just like, you've got all this blood on your hands you, and it, the world sees it. It's the, the, I think the only way is just, and, and, and it becomes an admission too, of what they've done. You know, they, um, you know, people tell them, stop, stop, stop. You finally stop, but you've, you know, you've killed half the people in the room. Uh, their only hope is really actually to go through out the other side to 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 ignite a regional war and to win it and you win it you know again well you're the victor victors get to to write the history you know that that's maybe the only hope that they have do you think uh, that they that people in israeli actually think they could win this are they that well, delusional well they know they can't win it on their own that's why they want to bring in the us i think netanyahu on that level he's pretty you know, he's very crafty. He knows that he can't do it, but he just... Do they think that is, they can win with the U.S.? I, yeah, I believe they like can. This, well, I, I think, think they may have miscalculated, that... but it may have been just like Zelensky's miscalculation when Boris Johnson approached him and said, yeah, pull out, tear up this, um, this Istanbul agreement. You know, we've got your back. We'll supply you with every weapon that you need. You'll beat the Russians. And he heard it. He believed he did it right. And... Okay, it's a little somewhat of a different situation for Netanyahu, but he's thinking the same thing. He said, look, OK, yeah, we're just a little country, but we got we've got the um, the United States right behind. They're committed. They'll do anything we want them to do. And we'll I'll pull them yeah, into but... this and then and it'll be the U.S. versus Iran. And come on, Iran, is just a it's it's economy is what, like three percent of the U.S. and whatever. Um, I think that's the way it looks like. 
he may have miscalculated. I think he has. It is, and I think actually the U.S. defense establishment understands this um, pretty well, which is why they've been trying not to get involved, is that they know that Iran can do a lot of damage to them, you know, especially they've got a lot of these bases that are very vulnerable to Iranian missiles. And Iran, you know, demonstrate that they can hit those bases with great precision. They did that after the, the assassination of Soleimani. But, mm-hmm. but right. I think again, these politicians sometimes uh, they don't really, you know, they, they it's it's often the the politicians, it's the civilian leaders that are can be the greatest warmongers of all. They just don't seem to really. They don't know the nuts and bolts of of uh, you know actual military conflict. I just think it's like you know we're the we're obviously like the most awesome force on earth and that's all I need to know. And I said, let's go take these people out. And in Netanyahu's case as well, you know, there's, it's, well, we're okay. We've got the U S and that they're the preeminent military power. And, and so what's to worry? We'll, we'll win. Well, I, I feel like the Ukraine Russia war changed everything though. And most of the world has woken up to it, but uh, the United States is slow to admit it, and maybe right. a, and NATO, well, Western Europe, a lot is, of, but yeah, right. You get you know, of course, um, a lot of us are seeing that 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 these Western military systems aren't really what they were cracked up to be. They've actually one after another has been neutralized by by the Russians, and but. And I'm sure against the, the like the defense experts, the real military um, tech guys, they understand this. But a lot of these civilian leaders really live in a different universe, and the the, the counter propaganda is pretty powerful. You step out of that, you know, you get into the the Western bubble, and it's it's only about Western strength. And there's just very you have to really make an effort to find any admission of weakness. Now it's coming out even in mainstream papers or in you know mainstream media outlets. But if you're not a very careful consumer of the news, if you're not really digging for the truth and you're just you're kind of comfortable in that bubble, you still have the sense of supremacy. It's still there. And you'd be surprised how many of these leaders you would think they would know better. But sometimes they, they're, you know, again, maybe like we were saying earlier, victims of their own propaganda. Yeah, but, uh, maybe, but it's <laughs> you just take – don't even have to go into the weeds with the Ukraine-Russia war. Just take a look like, okay, is Ukraine winning? How are they doing? How is it right. working out with the U.S. backing you and we got your back? What, you don't have to yeah, even go no, into the, the, clearly... the nitty-gritty of the logistics right. of the munitions. Like, right. what, we can only produce 550 <laughs> Patriot missiles a year? And yeah. Well, you have to shoot well, a lot two of that, for every missile. A lot of that missile. does not it's make like... it into the mainstream. If you just watch CNN or whatever – you. You probably would never know that, right? You but really you, if you're if you're Netanyahu, you're talking to the, the your military leaders that he like. This, you hope so. He's got to realize right. to some extent, yeah. right? But yeah, um, well, but, but the, said, I mean, the that, Netanyahu. Yeah, but the fact is, he just thinks he that clearly he's... wants war, and that means that he does mm-hmm. believe he can win it. If he thought he was going to be defeated, he wouldn't do it. But he believes he's going to win it. He's just, he, I, I, I think. You know, maybe he's probably hearing some things from his uh, IDF guys and maybe from some Pentagon officials, and he brushes it off. All oh, these guys, they're always just so damn cautious. You know, they just don't want to muddy their, their shiny new equipment. You know, let's just do it. I, I'm sick of hearing all these, you know, the naysayers. Well, okay, if, if this breaks into a wider regional war, which seems to be heading that way, I have high probability at this point, um, what how does that look can you play that out at all what does that mean for the world (laughs) (laughs) uh i don't know it's just like when a war begins it's just like that's the the only thing that's certain is that it's it's going to be it's going to take you places you never imagined i mean really it's true of every every major conflict it, the parties went into it expecting a certain outcome, and the, it was, and quite often, you know, just think of the major conflicts of our time: World War One, World War Two, the Civil War, whatever. It was um, like people went off to the front, saying, be over you know, a matter of days. Be, yeah, like a couple of weeks, a month, or whatever. And then four years later, many tens of millions of, of people dead. Yeah, much of Europe in smoking ruins. Who knows? We hope that that's not what's going to happen. I mean, you have to say, like with the Ukraine war, it was that um, 
Putin had a plan for a very quick war that would be resolved quickly by, you know, uh, a treaty. And he almost got it. I don't think he was, it's clear that he wasn't planning on the war that he has. They had to actually retreat, regroup, um, mobilize, <clears throat> you know, start cranking out their, up their military production. And they, like I said, several months into it, he realized that, oh, you know, we've got, this is, this is not what I was bargaining for. We've got a real war on our hands and we just, and, and yeah, so he had to, he had to adapt and, and now we have the war that we have now, but it was not the war that was intended. I, anyway, I'm just saying that once the war starts, I have no idea. And I don't think anybody does. A lot of things is, mm. you know, one thing is that, um, yeah, you can look back at the war like in 2006, war in 1982, but technology is evolving so rap rapidly and armies too. Um, you know, a, an army that fought well 20 years ago, you, you kind of used to assume that it's the same army now, but it's a new generation and they may just may not have the same uh, fighting spirit or, you know, or maybe training is in that country or in that particular military as has is not up to the standards that it used to be who knows you often don't find out these things until the war begins even the you know the nobody war is the great tester you know it puts everything to the test right and we'll we'll find out what these armies are made of i think we've already seen quite a little you know uh have a good idea of what the IDF is made of, and it hasn't been very impressive so far. But it, but again, they haven't really been put to the test because they have been fighting a war against civilians, and it's just a ragtag guerrilla army with very few weapons, to be honest. And and that hasn't been very. And they're still losing. But now they're going to be going up against Hezbollah, and Hezbollah has a fearsome reputation, and I I think it's it's um, you know it's. That that reputation is based on reality, but we'll find out. You know, we'll find out if we have a real war. The, I, I think this war will be very different than anything we've seen before because Israel will escalate immediately. They have shown that they have no restraint, that they will be preemptive, that they are comfortable with leveling population centers. They are. They have effectively. They're very good at dehumanizing their opponent. They have no qualms killing women, children, uh, you know, UN workers, uh, doctors, whatever. You know, they they may go they may go nuclear sooner rather than later because they feel like we got to win yeah. quick. Yeah. Without any there's... regard, with you know, like they said, there's no rationality left in the, this country. No regard about what the rest of the world thinks about them. They they are the eternal victim, like you said. So we just got to do what we got to do. And there's this apocalyptic element in there as well, thinking that we are God's chosen people. And that gives us the right to, you know, rape prisoners, which apparently is something that's debated now in Israeli society. Um, and to bomb you to to shoot children, sniper shooting toddlers like this is what this is the society that we this is what you're up against is that right. is this type of is this society this is israel right, right. Um, and that has no too, bombs it's... bombing embassies assassinating right. uh you know political leaders right we can go on forever about right. this so right. also i think it'll go it'll escalate it's... right rapidly it, right the, the president of this country that you just described recently came to the united states and spoke before its congress and got 58 standing ovations. I mean, that is just a very shameful chapter in the history of the United States. I mean, this this is a real stain. This is a, you know, th these are dark days. I'll just put it this way. I mean, yeah, the fact it is. That it's that disgusting. Could happen, that, that tells you, I mean, that we are in real <laughs> trouble ourselves, that if we cannot, you know, not only... Mm. It's bad enough if we didn't, you know, if we just turned away, but we've actually actually turned towards this horrible genocide and we're applauding. And and so shame on I us. Know. I mean, what a horror. Yeah. And and supporting. Right. This is actually one of the things that kept me up at night uh, is what I was thinking, like, oh, my God, this war might break out. And then I was just thinking, like, when this does happen, when Iran does strike out, I know my friends here in Tennessee that are. I'm, this, I, I'm in the land of Christian Zionism. 
I know they're yeah. all going to be behind Israel. And it's just like that. It makes me sick. And yeah, it's hard no, no, it to, does. It turns and it's my stomach too. And I'm hard to I talk a lot about of this are, and debate right. it. I, yeah, it's, it's awful. Now, you know, a lot of those people, you know, that they're decent people in so many ways, but they've, they're, they're, they've been lied to right. and they've, they've they're subscribed to this horrible, <laughs> yeah, they subscribe to this horrible lie. And it's so, yeah, it's painful to see. Um, um, yeah, but I, that's where we are again. These are, yeah, I, it's so hard to break through and, that's why I guess this podcast is good that maybe slowly we can educate people one, but when I try to talk to some people in person about it, it gets so emotional so quickly that it just, yeah. you're not going to make any progress. It's that they're not open to really changing their mind about these things, but we'll see. Yeah. I think, I really think we're, this is it. We're coming to the end where I think yeah. we're, Coming to the yeah. beginning of the end, I should say. Yeah, yeah. I think Israel, right. no, no, this could go Israel on has years, the only but... path for Israel yeah. is just destruction. Israel yeah. no, is going to be gone, true. I think. Right. I don't know if this will be, maybe we'll see some kind of replay of what we saw in April. But it just seems to me that the, the stars are aligned. I, you know, it's not just that, a, okay, once again, Israel has, has deliberately uh, provoked Iran has actually driven them into a, into a corner where they're forced to fight, right? They've done that. Um, but also, okay, last time, maybe there was enough resistance within the U.S. that that uh, Netanyahu felt that, okay, he had to pull back. It wasn't the time. The U.S. just w wasn't ready to get become involved. But now with the with Biden's condition, his withdrawal from the race, you know, um, Trump's, uh, I don't know if it's a likely victory, but I think probably our odds are in favor of him. It it just changes everything. I think that Netanyahu is looking at this and saying, this is my time. And, you know, that, and th there's just no way that there, there really isn't anything there in the U.S. that can stop me from, from pulling this off. I think he's probably going to go for right. it and that he probably will there's a good chance i can't say you know it's certain but there's a very good chance he will pull it off and he will draw the u.s into this conflict this time right i mean that address to the u.s congress was basically his confirmation i feel like getting yeah, those 58 I think it was, standing he was laying the groundwork and, for what he intended to do yeah right and, and re realizing as well that hey there's nobody in charge in the united states there's a bit of a power vacuum because biden is you know no longer there Mentally, he's dropped out of the race. Who, who's 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 in charge? He's like, I'm in charge. Netanyahu's in charge now. He came to our Congress and showed us that he's the one that's running, calling the shots now. Right. And it's gross. It's disgusting. And we, everybody, they all stood up and clapped for this genocidal maniac that's going to drag us into war and probably cause untold destruction and death across the world, across the Middle East. Who knows how far this thing could go? You know, we, there could be tens of millions dead later, and we were applauding this yeah, guy that's going to start yeah, we this don't, whole We thing. have no idea. But it's it, crazy. But it is, we, yeah. It's, um, right. It's a very, I'll say, very... I'll end on one thing, one, one positive note. I think that maybe the one thing that could make this this war shorter is that the United States is so weak militarily that it won't be able to sustain a long war. That we'll just right. try to turn on the engine... And it'll sputter. We'll send out a few sparks the first couple months, and be like, "Oops, we ran out of everything. We don't have yeah. anything right. to our, our combat this." Piles are depleted. Yeah, there was recently a, a study that came out about what might happen if there was a conflict over Taiwan, and basically, what the U.S. would run out of the missiles that they needed within a couple of weeks. Um, and I think it's probably the Mm -hmm. You know, if, if they've got to think about these other theaters too, right? They still have these commitments to Ukraine and to China. And then, yeah, maybe they only have a couple of weeks worth of, of missiles and so forth for mm -hmm. for the Middle East. Yeah, the the hubris of the United States. That's another thing that I always get comments on. People are like, oh, man, the U.S. is just going to kick everyone's butt. We're so much better than everybody. And they just they're so naive. They have no idea the current state of our military. And you, you, the same, I mean, our president, you know, Biden was the same thing when he was on that interview talking about, like, can the U.S. fight, multi, you know, these multiple, multiple wars, wars yeah. all these fronts? It's like, right. He's like, 
come on, man. We're the USA. We can do right. What kind of response is that? Yeah. What kind of response? And you right. should be a, a, a reasonable person be like, well, we want peace. Right. We'll, right. We're going to work. We could, our military is, is to be uh, an instrument of peace. You know, we, we, we are, we, we don't want to engage in all these wars. We want to engage in diplomacy and end these uh, with as little bloodshed as possible. Instead of this bravado, uh, uh right. that, that it's, it's like acting like my, it's like my, my two year old son coming and saying he wants to fight. That's how he is <laughs> acting. Like, ah, and he thinks he can, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's crazy. And we're going to find yeah. out that. That we, yeah, well, there's no, we, yeah, aren't, no, we aren't the top right, dog. Right. No awareness of limits. There, there, there are limits, very real limits to our power. And, you know, we may experience them very soon. Okay, Dad. Well, I'll let you okay. go because I know you just you just arrived in Moscow. You got to, you got the, the women in your, our family waiting on you. So, um, but we can maybe do another podcast over the weekend if there's some, if things pop off. Um, yeah. And yeah, also, I did want to talk to you about Maduro and Venezuela a bit. I mean, we can maybe do that okay. some other time. Sure. Although that's we might be on the back burner with what's happening now. Yeah. We'll it, see it what just, happens. Right. We might see the whole world, yeah, burst into flames. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I'll let you go. Have a great time. Uh, enjoy All your right. dinner. Enjoy Moscow. And yeah, you're in Russia. We should talk about Ukraine, Russia at some yeah. point in time. So okay, <laughs> we'll do that too. All right. We'll talk to you later. Okay, Dad. All right. Bye bye.